One last thing I mention as an epilogue. When we dive in here where we built the solver, and let's just go to the last solver we built here, this pyro solver. There are a few things worth mentioning, namely that this new pyro solver and this new pyro solver workflow in SOPS uses this sparse pyro solver, which is a fantastic new addition to Houdini 18. So what does that mean? Well, let's go back to our scene and maybe let's take the smoke example that we built, the billowy smoke that is, which of course is this one here. And if instead of emitting this smoke from a single object, like a single pig head, we built something a tiny bit more elaborate. So instead of a single pig head, let's drop down a circle maybe, set this to be a polygon with five divisions, oriented along the ZX plane like this, and use that to copy a few spheres onto those individual points, and setting up our spheres to be a polygon as well, and dialing down their scale to 0.1. So we're generating something like this as an initial emitter, maybe increase the radius scale of our circle here. So this is our initial emitter and let's wire that into our pyro solver chain here. What would have happened previously in previous versions of Houdini is the pyro solver would have created one full volume for this whole simulation. And when the simulation starts to run, you'll have smoke rising from each of those single spheres. However, this whole construct here is encapsulated by a single volume that is not sparse. That means that also in these areas in the center where there's no smoke in the beginning of the simulation, the smoke solver would calculate what's happening with those voxels in here and would waste lots of computational time and effort to generate a smoke solution in areas where there is no smoke. And with Houdini 18, the new sparse solver automatically takes care of resizing your volume and deactivating those voxels, in this case in here, which are not relevant for the simulation, thus speeding up our simulation times in cases like this massively. To see how this looks, let's just reset our simulation here, go to the pyro solver, and also just for good measure, reset that as well. So when we dial this down here and take a look at the solver, under solving and advanced, we can see sparsity checked here. So this enables the sparse solving, what I've been talking about. The only real downside of the sparse solving is that it does not work with OpenCL. So if I check use OpenCL and enable sparse solving, this won't work. So use OpenCL will be disregarded. So you can only use the OpenCL solver that's a bit faster than the standard solver by default when you disabled the sparse solving. However, in most cases, the speed gains that can be had using the sparse solver here are way bigger than the speed gains you could have with OpenCL. So in most cases, you should be good with the default setting, which enables sparse solving and disables OpenCL. All right, let's just run the simulation. I mean, this is not spectacular, but let's compare it against a solver that has sparsity disabled. So I'll just reset the simulation here, copy the solver and paste it. And in this solver version here, I'll uncheck enable sparse solving, then select both solvers here, reset both and merge those together. So both will be executed when I highlight this merge node here. And let's go to the performance monitor and let's do a benchmark here by hitting record and then running the simulation. Let's stop this. And we can see already by the red flag here that this pyro solver, which is non-sparse, is way slower than the sparse solver here. So let's close those. And you can see the time it takes for the sparse solver, 4.7 seconds to calculate the first 30 frames, is around four times faster than what it takes the standard solver to calculate this type of simulation here. Let's reset this one more time, clear my benchmark here, go back to my attributes, highlight both solvers, reset both, and finally copy this solver here one more time. And in this case, let's check use OpenCL. And I haven't run this benchmark, so it's the first time I'm doing this. And I'm kind of intrigued to see if OpenCL, non-sparse, or non-OpenCL and sparse will be faster. So again, just for good measure, select all three nodes, reset them one more time, go to the performance monitor. Let's stop this, clean it again, and re-record it. And run the simulation. So 31 frames in this case, and yeah, we can see what I expected. So Pyro Solver 2, the sparse solver, is the fastest with a bit over five seconds for 31 frames. Then second comes the non-sparse but OpenCL version of its solver, running more than twice as slow. And then on the last place, we've got our standard non-sparse, non-OpenCL solver version here. So my point being is with the new sparse Pyro Solver in Houdini 18, your Pyro simulations in most cases by default will run a good bit faster.